In lesson 2.2, we saw that fractions give decimals. For example, uh, we saw there that 1 8 is 0.125. And maybe when you did the work, you saw that uh, 1 quarter is 0.25, 1 half is 0.5, and so on. Uh, those decimals actually have to stop. Some other decimals, like 1 third, we saw was 0.3333 going on forever. And I think it was 6 sevenths we did in that lesson was what point, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, 857142, repeating forever, forever, forever. All right, so that, that's interesting. In fact, these guys had repeating patterns, and I could even argue that something like a 0.5, this half, is a repeating pattern. I could put zeros after, it's got a set of repeating zeros after the initial hiccup. And 0.25 really is an infinite decimal, if you like, with a repeating pattern of zeros. I'm being a little strange. Or 0.8 is a 0.125, a little bit of hiccup, and then it's repeating pattern zeros. So actually, every fraction we've seen, I could say, is a repeating decimal. There might be hiccup at first, but then it repeats in some way. Repeating zeros, repeating threes, repeating 0.857142s, and so on. So it begs the question, is every fraction actually a repeating decimal? At least eventually. So it might be in this sense or in this sense. And the answer turns out to be yes. And I want to prove that in this particular lesson. And I'm going to do it with a specific example. Um, I'll do four sevenths, because the sevenths turn out to be particularly ghastly to work through, but they illustrate the point. So let's do four divided by seven. And again, I'll do the 10 one machine uh, with a decimal point and a whole bunch of boxes going as far to the right in decimal land as I desire. But let's be very clear what's happening as I go through this process. It's a little bit tedious, but we'll just go through it. So I'm looking for groups of seven and four to which I can say there are none. But if I unexplode the four, now remember we started with a four here, four unexplosions makes 40 dots here. Any sevens amongst those? Yes, I think 35, that's uh, what, five sevens? And uh, that leaves five left over. So a remainder of five. And then five unexploded makes 50. Any sevens amongst those? You bet 49 comes to mind, that's seven sevens, leaving one left over, so one's the remainder there. Um, all right, unexplode the one, makes 10 dots. Any sevens amongst those? You bet, one group of seven, leaving uh, three behind. Remainder of three. Unexplode that remainder, 30 dots. Any sevens amongst those? I think 28, that's four groups of seven, leaving two behind, Remain, whoops, remainder of two. All right, two uh, dots, unexplode make 20. There are two groups of seven, I'm thinking 14, leaving six behind. Uh, six dots, unexplode makes 60. That uh, I'm now thinking 56, that's seven times eight, so eight groups of seven, uh, with four dots behind. Four dots behind, and now I'm dealing with 40 unexplosions. Uh, how many groups of seven? I think 35, leaving five behind. Uh, 50, da, da 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 So you see now, as soon as I hit four again, I'm just doing the same work as I was before. So the question is, I can tell I'm going, to hit a, I'm going to go into a cycle as soon as I hit something I've seen before. Am I sure to see something I've seen before? That's an interesting question. And the answer is yes, and here's why. When I first did this problem, I got a remainder of five. Five dots left over that weren't part of a group of seven. And then I got a remainder of one. And then I got a remainder of three. And I got a remainder of two. And I got a remainder of six. And I got a remainder of four. In fact, what are all the possible remainders I could see when I'm looking for groups of seven? I could see a remainder of one. In fact, I did somewhere. I could see a remainder of two. I could see, I, did, I did. A remainder of three in this case. Yep. A remainder of four, a remainder of five, a remainder of six. I wouldn't see a remainder of seven because this remainder of seven is a group of seven. Um, it might be if things worked out nicely, I could see a remainder of zero. Um, I wouldn't see a remainder of eight because amongst eight, there's a group of seven. Boom, 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 I'd see a remainder of one. So actually, if I go through the remainders, there's only seven possible remainders I could see as I go through this division problem. If I'm gonna keep going down this list, I'm gonna to have to repeat a remainder, like I repeated this four right here. And as soon as I repeat a four, repeat, repeat a remainder, I'm back to doing a piece of work I've already just done before. I'll be stuck in a cycle. So for example, at some point I have to hit a two, I know I'm gonna be doing the same work as I did from two onwards, and hit another two, hit another two, hit another two, hit another two. So actually, I know that if I do four divided by seven, there are only seven possible remainders I can do. I know at some point as I've played this game, I'm gonna hit the same remainder, because I'm gonna keep going, I can't just keep doing different remainders all the time, and as soon as I hit a, a repeat of a remainder, I'm in a repeating cycle. Now, philosophically, I'd hate to write out the details, but I can now say that 17 37ths is sure to give a repeating decimal. 
So what I'm doing, I'm looking for groups of 37 and 17. And there are only a certain number of remainders. I could get a remainder of 0, maybe a remainder of 1, a remainder of 2, a remainder of 3, or up to a remainder of 36. I won't see a remainder of 37, because that is a group of 37. I won't see a remainder of 38, because that's a group of 37, plus one more. So actually, when I do that work, I know as I go down, marching to the boxes to the right, there's only 37 possible remainders I could, that could appear. I'm going to have to hit upon the same remainder twice. And as soon as I hit on a repeat remainder, I'm in a repeating cycle. So yes, that has a repeating decimal expansion. So we've just proved a big result. But this is a whoppingly big result. Every fraction has a decimal expansion that repeats. That might repeat after hiccup, like these finite ones. In fact, you might want to think about my argument, how it works with the zeros. Actually, I have that in the text below this video on the screen. So those ones are good to think about. But there we have it. Every fraction is a repeating decimal, gives rise to a repeating decimal which then is philosophically marvellous. Because that tells me something. What about those decimals that are not repeating patterns? For example, look at this number. 0 0.1010, 1100, 1110000, 1111000, and so on. This decimal definitely has a pattern to it. I made the pattern very clear, but it's not a repeating pattern. That means this guy is not a fraction. Whatever this number is, it's not a fraction. It's called an irrational number. Fractions are called rationals, ratios of whole number, uh, ratios of whole numbers. And something that's irrational means literally not rational. This guy cannot be a fraction because we just proved that every fraction has a repeating decimal. This guy does not have a repeating decimal. Therefore, it is not a fraction. We've just discovered the existence of irrational numbers through this work. Whoa. Whoa! In fact, now you have lots of fun. Here's another irrational. Let's make one up. Uh, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, 0, 6, 0, 7, 0, 8, 0, 9, 0, 1, 0, 0, 11, 1, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 3, da, da, da. Clear there's a pattern going on there, but it's not a repeating pattern. So whatever this number is, it's somewhere on the number line. It's just bigger than one-tenth. Um, it's a number that cannot be a fraction. Wow. Irrational numbers. Amazing. All right. Have a look at the text below this video and uh, have a look at the solutions, that's the problems I posed there, they're in the companion guide to this course. All is good, all is grand, and all is actually philosophically perturbing at this case. Well, I love it. Right, thanks.